Welcome to another of our weekly Bible messages from the Bridge Inn Gospel Hall. I want to speak to you today about the most important instruction that you will ever be given. And I think it's true to say that many of us don't like being told what to do. We don't like getting instructions. And certainly I've got experience with that. I'm a high school maths teacher and I experience almost on a daily basis teenagers that don't like being told to sit down and to do some maths work. And you can see that there is some difficulty there in pupils following instructions in that context. And of course, in these unusual times that we find ourselves in, there are additional government rules that have been applied to us. We've, we have been told, and I'm sure we know the rules, but we're being told to, to stay indoors. We've been told only to go outside for exercise or for food or for our job, if, if it's an essential job. We've been told to stay two metres apart. We've been told to wash our hands and to sing happy birthday through twice as we do it. And certainly for me, that's had a big impact on my life. I've, I've gone from seeing hundreds of people on a working day to seeing practically nobody. I've also gone from having um, normal hands to having quite dry hands because of all the, the hand washing and the extended hand washing that I've been doing as well. And of course, these are vital instructions. It's important in these difficult times that we follow these government instructions, but these are not the most important instructions that you will ever receive. The most important instructions that you will ever receive are given to us in the Bible. It says in Acts chapter 4 and verse 12, Neither is there salvation found in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And if we look further up in Acts chapter 4, verse number 10 actually tells us who that verse is speaking about. And it may come as no surprise to you who that verse is speaking about. It says in Acts chapter 4 verse 10, by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth in Acts chapter 4 and 12 it says, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. This is a command from God. It's not a command from the government to keep us safe. It's not the command of a teacher to try and help with their education. It is a command from God to secure our salvation. That's what Acts chapter 4 and verse 12 is. And we may ask, salvation from what? That there is no salvation in any other but Jesus Christ of Nazareth. What do we need to be saved from? Well, the Bible again is very clear that we are facing a lost eternity. The Bible speaks about a place called hell and actually it tells us that hell is ultimately emptied into the lake of fire for all of eternity and that is the the end destination for all who fail to accept God's salvation. Every single person in this world that doesn't accept God's salvation will ultimately face a lost eternity in that lake of fire. It tells us in the Bible that none of us are actually able to enter God's heaven without God's salvation. And the reason for that is because of sin. The Bible says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And when I speak about the commandments of God, perhaps when the command of God is spoken of, you maybe think about the Ten Commandments. And the Ten Commandments were given in the Old Testament. And in the Old Testament, we discover that actually the, old, the Ten Commandments show us that we are sinful, that we cannot live to God's standards. That's what sin is. Sin is when we fail to meet and live up to God's standards. And we cannot meet the Ten Commandments. We can't even live up to the very first of the Ten Commandments. The first of the Ten Commandments is, Thou shalt have no other God before me. Now, if we're honest with ourselves... We must accept that we can't even live up and meet that first of the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt have no other God before me. That means that there's nothing else in our lives that is more important to us than God. And the service towards God and our worship towards God. And there's nothing else, not work or friends or family or hobbies or anything in our life that takes over from 
our service to God. And if we're honest, I'm sure there's not one that would claim that we live to that standard. We do need God's salvation. And God's salvation can only be found in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. And again, we might say, well, that sounds a little bit restrictive. There's a lot of different opinions going around about about that. That there's a lot of different people that would say that they can offer us salvation. There's a lot of different thoughts and views on how we get to heaven. But the Bible is very, very clear. The Bible says, neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Why is it only Jesus Christ of Nazareth that can offer us salvation? Why is it only through him that we can be saved from our sins for all of eternity? Well, it's because of who he is. He is God's perfect son. And it's because of what he did. He came to earth. He was born of the Virgin Mary. And he lived a perfect and a sinless and a spotless life. His life was not like yours and not like mine. Not like even the most morally upstanding person that you might know in your life. He, in his life, was entirely sinless and perfect and pure. He kept the Ten Commandments. He pleased his Father God in everything that he did. And even although he lived to that standard, he allowed himself to be taken. He allowed himself to be nailed to a cross and crucified. And while he was upon that cross, he was made sin for us. The Bible says that God poured out his anger and his wrath against sin on the person of his son on the cross at Calvary. He was punished and judged for sin on the cross. He shed his blood as a sacrifice before God and he died. And he's able to save you. He's able to save you for all of eternity. And you might ask, well, where is the proof of that? Where is the proof of his ability to save? The proof is that he rose again from the dead. He, is, he rose from the tomb and the stone was rolled back and he's back and he's in heaven right this very moment and he's able to save you. And today, if you're not a Christian, if you're not saved today, then the only way that you can be saved is by following the most important commandment that you will ever receive, which, just as I finish, is Acts chapter 4 and verse 12. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved.